Hi, Sam. This is Ellsworth. I saw your problem and decided to give it a shot. Now, this is a pretty standard physics problem. But in physics, they actually give you the equations and you get to solve it from there. Here, we get to actually derive the equations themselves and get to see where they come from. Here we go. Here's your problem. A ball is shot from the ground straight up into the air. Initial velocity is 49 feet per second. Assuming the air resistance can be ignored, how does it go? And we're given this very important piece of information here. The acceleration due to gravity is 32 feet per second squared. So we have to do two integrals and factor the two initial conditions. Let's do that. Okay, the acceleration due to gravity, which they told us, is negative 32 feet per second squared because the acceleration is down opposite to the direction of positive motion. So we need to integrate that with respect to time to get the velocity. And you're given the velocity is at plus v0. Don't forget those concepts of integration. They'll be very important later. We're told, however, that t equals zero, the velocity is 49 feet per second, so we plug it in, and we get that the initial velocity is 49 feet per second, which makes sense because we were told that. So, no surprise there. The velocity type of t equals zero, 49 feet per second. Okay, how high does the ball go? Well, that's another integral. Integrate again. Integrate V of T dt. And you put that in. And you get ET squared over 2 plus V0 of T and Y0. Now, we told the ball to launch from the ground. Ground's y equals zero in our problem, so y zero equals zero. So vertical eye of the ball at any given time, put it in. There's your equation for the, for the ball at any given time. A good result, but is that what we're looking for? No. We need to find the fast pi of the ball. So to do that, we take the derivative, is equal to zero. Put that value in, and then get the height of the ball at that time. So let's do that. Here's the derivative. We differentiate and get that. Negative 32 t over sorry, plus 49. Set equal to zero. Solve for t. That will tell us at what time does the ball reach its maximum height. Well, as it makes sense because at the highest point, the velocity of the ball is zero. So common sense and math actually intertwine here. They make sense to each other. Okay, so at t equals 49 over 32, the ball that's about height. But how high is the ball? Plug it in, you get your answer. So this equation, I put in the number, crunched it, and got that the ball's around 112.5 feet high in the air. So that's how you solve it. Plug in initial conditions, two, two integrations, a little bit of thinking, and you're there. Any questions? Let me know. Otherwise, happy calculating.